Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we'll take a look at applying the default video transition to a sequence. We'll look at how to apply the transition, check out important preferences, and explore different ways to modify the transitions. Let's fire up smoke and take a look. Before we add any transitions to our edited sequence, let's take a look at Smoke's default preferences for applying transitions. Once in Preferences, head to the Transitions tab. Here you'll find the default settings for adding transitions. Be aware that the default alignment for a transition is centered. If there are no handles on one or both sides of the cut point, Smoke will not add a transition. You can set the default transition length to suit your personal preference. Each new applied transition will default to this duration. To add a transition, we need to make sure we move the timeline positioner so that it is parked on a cut point and with nothing else on the timeline selected. Use the down arrow to advance to the next edit. To make sure you are parked on an edit point, take a look at the smoke effect bar. This is the transition icon. If we move away from the edit point, it becomes greyed out indicating that you cannot apply a transition. Step back to the edit point. Click the transition icon. The transition type menu bar appears. It shows three different options for adding transitions. Choose dissolve. We can see the default transition has been applied to our timeline and the dissolve transition menu appears. Here we can change the transition alignment from the drop down menu and alter the duration to suit by either clicking and dragging the value or typing in a specific number. If you want the transition to dip to a color, choose a color and select OK. Let's advance to another edit. This time we'll apply the transition using a keyboard shortcut. Command T, the same shortcut you would use in FCP, applies the default transition. To remove a transition, you can press the delete key here in the transition effect bar. Another way to add a transition is to right click a cut in the timeline and choose the transition type from the pop-up menu. With the right click method of adding a transition, the timeline positioner cannot be parked over the cut point as you will be unable to add a transition. By glancing at the timeline, smoke gives you a visual indicator of which edits have associated handles. The small arrows on either side of an edit point indicate there are handles available. As we can see here at this edit point, there are no handle indicators. By clicking on the edit point, it will show you exactly how many frames are available on each side of the edit. This shows there are no handles available on either side. So if we apply a transition here, let's use Command T. It appears to have added the dissolve, but as you can see in the transition menu, it has no duration. Typing in a new duration or changing the transition alignment would have no effect as there are no handles available on either side of the cut. Let's create some handles to enable us to add a transition. From the Edit Mode drop-down menu, choose the Slip tool. Now click in the middle of the outgoing shot and drag towards the cut. The amount of available handles now increases. We haven't changed the timing of the cut point, we've just changed the clip position within the edit. Use the slip tool now on the outgoing shot, dragging back towards the edit point. Now we've created handles on both sides of the edit, which means we can now add a transition. Return to the edit select tool by using the keyboard shortcut A. Selecting the transition and hitting command T will now add the default transition. Modifying the transition length and alignment can be done directly in the timeline. Let's zoom in on a particular area of interest. Hold down Option and Z and draw a rectangular region around a section of the timeline. Hover over the start or end of a transition and the cursor changes, letting us click and drag and modify the start or end position of the dissolve. Hover over the center of the transition icon and the cursor appearance changes again. Clicking and dragging now will change the position of the transition. Be careful not to be too far above the transition icon when dragging, as you can accidentally change the edit point itself. You can also modify multiple transitions at once. Hold down the command key and select multiple edit points. 
Now, any function you perform to one transition affects all of the selected items. With the number of transitions selected, pressing the delete key in the effect bar will remove all the highlighted transitions. Here's one last tip. By clicking on the video track header, it will select all items and edits on that track. Hit Command T and it will add the default transition to every single edit. Just a reminder that Smoke 2013 is currently pre-release software, so features seen in this episode may change come the final release. To apply the default transition using either the keyboard shortcut or the transition menu, you need to be positioned on an edit with nothing else selected. If for some reason Smoke is not applying the transition, check the available handles on each side of the edit point. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for future episodes to get you up to speed on the basics fast. Uh, uh, uh.